Other interesting business news, Stellantis U.S. sales are down 21% Q2 compared to Q2 2023, also known as terrible. Now, in the U.S., Stellantis, for those who aren't gearheads or, you know, and never heard of that weird name before, that is a new parent company, European-based, that owns U.S. entities such as Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge. So, they had a company actually went bankrupt so bad in 2009 that they were sold off to Fiat, and then they rebranded that, so now you have this new parent company, which is actually, Stellantis has the most named brands that I know of, in terms of they also have Alfa Romeo, Maserati, uh, Fiat, and a lot of brands I quite frankly can't pronounce off the top of my head, but they are one of the largest ones, but they've also been making worse and worse products. I'm not going to blame this entirely on EVs and the direction of the company. Well, just a bit. To me, Dodge, I mean, I just, I mean, the Dodge brothers, they changed the world. Fun little business fact of the day before we go into the article. One of the very first Ford vehicles that were made, they were just made by Dodge. Dodge, without Dodge was the OEM. Oh, yeah, they made everything except, I believe, the tires were Firestone, the glass was someone else, and the seats, get the subcontractors for those. But yeah, I mean, Dodge had a rich history of manufacturing, and then Chrysler bought Dodge. And Chrysler, they had some cool stuff throughout the years. The V10 Viper, of course, that only came with a stick shift. That was, of course, how all cars should be by default. And the CEO of Dodge used to be so proud about making big displacement, a lot of horsepower for a great price point. I mean, they made some of the best Hemi, oh, they own the word Hemi as well, not just the design, but it's one of the best brands out there. And they said, we don't care what the industry is doing, we're going to make good old V8s for everyone. And then the U.S. government kept kneecapping the automotive companies, and now they're acquiescing, making smaller, more boring cars, at least to me. Now, Dodge, specifically, they used to make a lot of money, or they do pretty well with the, the Charger and Challenger. And they recently said, on the same production, instead of having a good old V8, now you're going to get an EV. Or a straight six. Which, again, a straight six is appropriate for a BMW. They've been doing that for years. And they also have the courtesy of giving you three pedals, I mean, those to the customers. But Dodge, not so much. Now, going to the actual article from the Detroit Free Press, is from Eric Lawrence. They say, quote, scientists' U.S. sales are down 21% in the second quarter compared to a year earlier. Now, looks like they also, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, they do have some fiat presence in the United States. Now, it said that the U.S. sales for the second quarter came in at 344,993, which... Yeah, that's not good. That's not the last quarter or same quarter last year was 438,34,648. Which yeah, that's down quite a bit. Not so great for Stellantis. Now they say that Detroit rivals General Motors by contrast reported a slight gain in US sales for the fiscal quarter up 0.6%, coming in at 696,086 vehicles. Ford is scheduled to report their sales later a couple of days. Now, they note in terms of specific brand breakdown, Jeep dropped 19%. Ram was down 26%, which is terrible. That's the worst thing, because the most important thing, especially for the big three, which, again, used to be, well, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler, for, well, debate, you, you could debate if they're really part of the big three, but nevertheless, the most important vehicle in the U.S. for automotive manufacturers is crossovers, also known as SUVs, and trucks. Because that's where all the money is. There's a reason they don't make the Chevy Cruze anymore at General Motors. Which, I mean, I love because they had a stick shift option and a turbo. But, nevertheless, they lose money on those cars. They're junk. Well, some of them are also manufactured like junk. But, nevertheless, there's not a lot of profit in them. So, the fact that their truck sales are going down, even worse. I suspect, we'll see if they dive into the actual... I don't think they talk about specifications, but... Dodge, again, also part of the government kneecapping all the companies. For the 1500, the entry-level truck for Dodge, the, the Ram... Now it's going to be a V6, which, again, for most pickup truck drivers, it's not just a culture thing in terms of they want the V8 because the V8 is great. And if it rhymes, it has to be true. Obviously, kidding. But it's also, I mean, a lot of people don't like the idea of having a smaller engine work harder because over time it would be worse. A lot of people would say that. And, yeah, so now instead of getting a V8, you have to pay more expensive. You have to pay for the 2500 or the 3500. Those platform or the Dodge Ram trucks do come with the V8. Now you have to spend more to get that same V8. Now, granted, the V6 will make more power, yada, yada, yada. Now, but yeah, Ram sales are down 26%. Chrysler fell 19%, which, again, I don't know who's actually buying a Chrysler-branded vehicle these days. Nevertheless, Dodge declined 17%, which, yeah, they have a crappy little SUV that's also the rebadged Fiat one. Is it the Dodge Hornet? It looks awful. All the reviews are rudimentary, to say the least, on the YouTube. I... There's not a lot of people bragging about it. They also know that Fiat... What is this? Fiat reported sales of 316 units 
for the quarter compared to 144 units a year four units a year ago. They say as typical, the company did not release sales numbers for its luxury Maserati brand, which depreciate like a rock. That's the definition of depreciation, Maserati. I mean, people think Mercedes is bad. Oh no. Yeah, why do they even bother selling Fiat's? It's a also they're not known for being reliable. I know that was it the Fiat 500 Ab Abarth Abarth. I know they had a cool, fun stick shift one that one of my friends really liked. But yeah, they sold 316 Fiat's in Q2. Which I think I've seen once or twice. Now, granted, you could also make the argument a lot of the modern Jeeps are just bastardized Fiat's with extra pieces of plastic that say Jeep on it. Yeah, that, that's true as well. That's partially why I think it's not doing so great. They say that, quote, one bright spot was the increase in sales for a couple of its more expensive, profitable models, the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, which, again, that's good. Those are much more profitable than the lower ones. They also, Slantis also continued to note its strength in plug in hybrid models, citing the SP Global Mobility US State Registration Database through April 30th, said that the Jeep Wrangler 4XE and Jeep Grand Cherokee 4XE, I believe that's the, that's the Elizabeth Warren edition. They also have the Dodge Hornet RT and Chrysler Pacifica hybrids held their ranking as four of the top, well, really, four of the top five best-selling plug-in hybrids in the U.S. And yet their sales are still down. So we'll see how, the, we'll see how, how long could they keep making these vehicles and still make a profit. Yeah, I, I'm not sure who's in charge of the Dodge brand in particular, but again, I have a lot of friends who used to love Dodge trucks, especially, I think, what was it, 2016, 2015? Okay. Five or six years ago, cut my friend's bottom. Now there's like one guy in the block who has a Dodge truck that's new. And he, when I say new, he got the 2023 model. It was the last model year where the 1500 came with the V8. And he specifically wanted it because, again, he wanted a 1500 with a V8. Again, anecdotally speaking, there's like 30, what is it, maybe 20, 20 people on my block. I just look down the street. A lot of GMCs, a lot of Silverados, and a lot of F-150s. But, yeah, it's, uh, again, it's... Even the competition isn't growing exponentially. Again, they said, you know, GM was up like 0.6%. You have record high. I mean, the interest rates to buy a car are terrible. It's just like a house these days. This is another reason why I always tell people to drive your car until the wheels fall off as long as it's safe. Get the best ROI out of it. For, but yeah, so there's a lot of things going against automotive companies these days. But Stellantis in particular, I mean, they've always been the run to the litter, so to say, for, for decades. And... I don't know. We'll see what the CEO does, how they might be able to turn around, to, especially for the U.S. sales. But yeah, I, I don't know anyone bragging about buying a Dodge these days. I think they need, well, oh, it's definitely a culture thing and need some more marketing to be sure. But not too surprised to see their sales crash 21% compared to the same fiscal quarter last year. But let me know in the comments. Do you, do you know anyone, you just expand the quarter, anyone this year who has bought a Dodge product or a Chrysler product or a Jeep? I'd be really interested. I again, I know one one person. Wait a minute. Maybe he bought a Q. Maybe he did buy a Q3 last year. Time goes by, goes by way too quick. But nevertheless, let me know in the comments. And also, what do you think was the last good Dodge product they made? To me, it was the good old last generation Dodge Viper, which came with a stick shift. They, you know, handmade in Detroit. They put that plaque on. Pretty good marketing. It came with the V10. Is all I was gonna say. Is all cars should by default, or perhaps a V8. A debate for another time, perhaps. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.